Gospel of Luke chapter 2 verse 5 to be taxed uh, what a word to start off with Mary his espoused wife being great with child all right it's the census and the poll tax that we talked about it we discussed it's God's way of getting Joseph to be where Jesus needs to be born God used taxes and census to get Joseph where Jesus needed to be born. Else Joseph and Mary would have had no reason to go to Bethlehem. <clears throat> and his spouse wife, they're going to be married. Yet the Bible calls them husband and wife. Great. That doesn't, well, she's, she's a great woman that God has chosen her, but that's, that's not the great. She's in her ninth month of pregnancy. When they go into Bethlehem, she's in her ninth month of pregnancy. And the official Roman registry will list Mary, and she's pregnant, and Bethlehem. So when they say we know not where you came from, that is a crock. There were official records. Now let's the whole world to be taxed, verse one. And all went to be taxed, verse three. And Joseph, verse four, went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his spouse's wife, being great with child. It was documented. It was recorded that this man went to Bethlehem. This man had a spouse wife. Wasn't his wife a spouse wife? She was pregnant. They gave X amount of money. He is of Bethlehem, of David. That all had to be recorded. I wonder where that information is today. I wonder if they found that. Because it will prove who the Messiah is. If that evidence would come up. A spouse. Now a spouse, look at Matthew 1.18. And throughout Luke, we're going to be going through the four Gospels. We're going to look at the places where it shows up. Now, not all four Gospels have all the stories. Some do. Some have. Some are only two Gospels. Some are only in, you know, three Gospels. John records a lot that's not in the Gospel. In Matthew 1.18, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. All right, we're picking up where we were in, in Luke 4, 2. They're in Bethlehem. They paid their tax. When, as his mo mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, there's that word, before they came together, no intercut, no sexual relations, She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. When she came into Bethlehem, she was pregnant by the Holy Spirit, we're told, by Gabriel. And Joseph, her husband, her husband. How bounding was espousalment in the Old Testament? He was your husband, she was your wife. You didn't have no stag party. There was a marital feast, but it wasn't, you know, get your last hula. Her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. 
And he had rights by the, by the law. She should have been stoned. But it wasn't by adultery. It wasn't by fornication. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, Luke chapter 2, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. She wasn't with another man. She is your wife. You are her husband. Now, when you get into Jerusalem, which I mean, when you get into Bethlehem, which you you don't know what's going to happen, and you shall bring forth a son in Bethlehem, where we are in Luke. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. When you go to Jerusalem, for he shall save his people from their sins. Back to Luke. So they're a husband and wife, but they haven't come together yet. This is a spousal. Verse 6. And so it was. All the taxes, all the census, and being in Bethlehem, being there to where they're supposed to, and so it was that while they were there in Bethlehem, the days were accomplished. Days, not months. She's in her ninth month. It's only days now. So you imagine when Joseph told Mary, we got to go down to Bethlehem. Can you imagine what her thoughts were? Oh, uh, this baby could be born anyway, anytime along the way. Nope. The baby will wait till you get to Bethlehem and get all your business taken care of. The taxes I'm talking about. The days were accomplished that she should be delivered. So, again, she's in her ninth month of pregnancy. So, Luke 1 26. Luke 1 26 to 38. Verses 26 to 38 in chapter 1 to chapter 2, verse 6 is nine months. Those verses are nine months. John the Baptist is already six months old. Six months ago, John the Baptist was born. Six months later, Chapter 2, verse number 6 and 7, Jesus is born. Verse number 7. And she brought forth her firstborn son. Why would you need to say firstborn son if there wasn't others? Why didn't it say her only son? I mean, when it comes to Jesus... The Bible knows he was the only son because it says of God, God's only begotten son. The Holy Spirit knows what the word only means. Here it says firstborn son, so God implied there's going to be other sons and daughters. And wrapped him, Jesus, in swallowing clothes and laid him, Jesus, in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. All right, here we are. Another good verb. Swaddling is binding tight. Like he will be when he dies. When he dies, they will wrap him in this type of swaddling clothes. But it will be grave clothes. Lazarus would be an example how they wrap them. Manger is a trough or box for food for cattle. Grain. No room. Let's read verse 1 through 5 again. 
Now it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor in Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his spouse wife, being great with child. There's no room at the end because every Jew is in their cities. And I've even used the fact that, you know, the world has no room for Jesus. That's not the case. When Joseph and Mary got to Bethlehem, all the signs said, no vacancy. That's what the no room at the end means. Every one of the Jews had to report and be present in the city of their lineage. So all the inns were full. I mean, it would be great. It's great spiritual preaching that you know, the, the world has no room for Jesus, but Doctrinally, historically, he couldn't find a place to stay. There was no light left on for Mary and Joseph. All the signs said no vacancy. So, sometimes what's preached out of pulpit is not always true. Sometimes what men believe. We never read that Mary was on a donkey. You don't see donkey. Maybe he put her in a cart. A wagon. So. Now. It was not the keeper that rejected Jesus. For Jesus had not been born yet. How can you say the innkeeper rejected Jesus? Jesus was in the womb. His inn was full. Don't you think if if he would have been given a revelation by Gabriel or Michael, there's a there's a man and a pregnant woman coming, sir. In that woman's womb is the, the Messiah. I would like you to give room and space, reserve your best room for them. Don't you think he would have done it? Yet Jesus wasn't born. Look where we again. And they, they brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Where does it say it was a barn or cave? I have visited old historical villages and all that, and sometimes they had the, the feeding trough out in the fields. Yeah, they had them in barns, they also had them out in the fields. We're not told it's a cave. We're not told it was a barn. We're just told he was put into a feeding trough. And we're going to again see that the manger scene is wrong as we go further into this study. By the way, when you read Isaiah and you realize that your manger scene is an idol, it's an image, it's not to be worshipped. It's wrong. By the way, the star doesn't show up here. The star shows up two or three years later. Okay. Now, 2-4. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, Unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, 
because he was of the house and lineage of David. Now here's the question. Why didn't Joseph stay in Bethlehem? That was his land grant. That was where he was supposed to be if he was of David. David was of Judah. He's in the land of Judah. Or actually Benjamin. Benjamin had, had but it was all Judah. And here's another question. Had Joseph no family or house or home to go to? No aunts, no uncles? No mother, no father, no grandmother, no grandparents, or cousins, or that? That if Bethlehem is his house of his lineage, where is his family? When Jesus is born, Israel is so out of place, they're not even supposed to be in the, they're not in the land where they're supposed to be in. The Sea of Galilee is not where a man of Judah, being of David, belongs. Now, in fact, we are even told a Pacific city. Joseph and Mary should have been living in Bethlehem. But they weren't. If he was of Bethlehem, his family, why was he in Zebulon's lot? Galilee is Zebulon's spot, location, or area of Israel. I'll tell you one reason why. Because the Bible speaks of Al Zebulun, there was another uh, boy's name of the tribe of Israel. There shall be great light. God had to use taxes to get Jesus to be born in Bethlehem. Because Joseph would never have gone down. Now, Joseph had, he's going to go down to Egypt and all that. Eventually, Joseph is going to make his way back to Galilee. Back to Zebulon, where there's a prophecy spoken about Jesus coming out of Zebulon. Look at that. Joseph being out of place and taxation brought you where Jesus is to be born to fulfill scripture and to be brought where Jesus will come from when he begins his ministry, his work, according to scriptures. How is that interesting? Verse 8. And there was in the same country, Judea, shepherds abiding in the field. Now David was a shepherd in Bethlehem. You remember that? Remember when Samuel came up to Jesse? Wow, that's a great boy. Uh, Samuel, yes, God, I ain't him. Next, wow, look at the straight. Uh, Sammy, yes, I ain't him. Seven times. Uh, Jesse, you got any other boys here? No, I got one that's out in the field. He's little, he's pruny, a little ruddy little kind of boy taking care of the sheep. He tells Saul, he says, Listen, you know, I was taking care of the sheep, and a bear and a lion came, and I took care of both of them. I minded the sheep. When he comes to the to the battlefield of Goliath, his brother, did you leave the little sheep that were in the wilderness and followed the blah, 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 blah? You are returning to where Jesus is going to sit upon this man's throne one day as he was a little boy growing up being a shepherd. I wonder that well was Stu there and Mary and Joseph time that, that David said about oh. If I would only have a drink of that one well, and he said, one specific well. Oh, if I could have a drink of that well that's in Bethlehem. Because it was overtaken by the Philistines. And there's three men marched right in there, got him a drink of water. Well, there was a sign there. Here, David, well, we couldn't say he drank it. He, he didn't drink it. And he wouldn't go. His, his men went there. All right. And there was the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing. They are working. 
God never calls a lazy person. They're in Bethlehem. Let's run some references on this one. 1 Samuel 16.4 1 Samuel 16.4 There's so much you miss just by oh I read my five chapters, that's it. First Samuel sixteen verse four. Verse four. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the town the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said come thou peacefully he said peacefully I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord sanctify yourselves come with me to sacrifice and he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice it came to pass when they were come they looked upon Elab and said surely the Lord's anointed is before him but the Lord said unto Samuel look not upon his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. And he goes through all the boys. Again. In verse 11, Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remains yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy with all of a beautiful countenance. He was better looking than Jesus. Did you get that? According to Isaiah 53, David was more beautiful than Jesus was. People look at David, wow, look at, look at how handsome that young. They look about Jesus. There's no desire. There's no beauty in him. We should desire him. And goodly to look to. The Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. You ever ask yourself a question? Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forth. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. You ever ask yourself a question? You ever read the Bible and think, where Samuel just anointed David to be king of Israel, you wonder if that was the spot where the king of Israel was born? It said, call, call Samuel verse 11, said to Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remains yet one youngest. Behold, he keepeth the sheep. Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him. For we will not sit down till he come here. Doesn't say where he was. So just go get him. Wouldn't it be interesting of God that that manger where Jesus lied or where Mary was gave birth to that baby, if it's not the very spot you would go back and find where David was anointed? That would be interesting. Wouldn't it to be found out? I'm not saying this. But wouldn't that be interesting? In Bethlehem, the lineage and house of David. That's something to think about. Look at 1 Peter 3 4. 1 Peter 3 4. First Peter 3 4. But like Jesus Christ. Second Peter uh, five four. Excuse me. First Peter five four. Couple chapters, chapters ahead. Five four. And verse one. The elders which are among you exhort. Whom el who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of su sufferings of Christ, and also a partake of the glory that shall be revealed. 
feed the flock of God. Look at that. Feed the flock of God. That's what the shepherds were doing. Verse 3. Uh, verse 4 now. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fainteth not away. We're looking at sheep. We're looking at a shepherd. God calls shepherds. He's born where David, the king of Israel, was a shepherd. John chapter 10. The Gospel of John chapter 10. The Gospel of John chapter 10, verse 1. Very, very, I say unto you, he that enters not by the door of the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and robber. But he that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Now I see manger scenes. With camels and asses. And all. I've never seen a man just seen with sheep. They were shepherds. And when he put it forth his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spent Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spent unto them. Then said Jesus unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All they that ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And he shall go in and out and find pasture. Verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Verse 14. I am the good shepherd. And know my sheep. And know of mine. Who did the Holy Spirit go and call when Christ was born? Goldsmith? Craftsman? The priest? No, he called shepherds. Now the Davids and 2.8 are doing the work of Jesus Christ over Israel, the shepherds. Uh, back, to, back to Luke 2.8. I would I, I would not be amazed of God if this is the spot where David was when he was a little boy growing up. If this is not the spot where he was anointed to be king. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the in the fields, excuse me, keeping watch over their flock by night. You know what Jesus does with his shepherd, his sheep? He keeps watch. And if one goes away, he'll leave the ninety nine and go get that one. No sheep leaves the fold without the shepherd knowing. And it's not December 25th, for in Israel it would be too cold for the shepherds and their flocks. The shepherds are Jesus Christ, the type of, and David, 4,000 years later. First Samuel 17, 15, David, the shepherd, is born in Bethlehem. The time would be April to autumn. And we'll stop right there. We're looking at the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll pick up next with the, the shepherds. Look into the shepherds. An interesting fact that you will not find in a nativity scene. I mean, some nativity scenes, they'll have one or two sheep, maybe. But listen, there were shepherds. Plural. They had a whole bunch of sheep. Plural. And they come.